Hogwarts Castle, a five-inch gauge locomotive. Part nine, the engine has a tender behind. And the time has come to take it apart. The tender's full of all manner of bits and pieces, so I'm just trying to identify what these are. This is obviously the hand pump handle. This looks like part of a handbrake. I think this was probably fitted on the engine originally. Also in the top of the tender are some other random bits and pieces, but I don't know what these are, so I'll just put them on one side for now. Time to clean out this old coal, complete with coal dust, using my Henry vacuum cleaner. The tender is very dirty and dusty, so I took this opportunity to use a paintbrush to just get into the corners and loosen some of the dust so the vacuum cleaner can get it. It looks like there's been some kind of a modification made to the tender. It's not very well put together, and this is definitely one area where I'm going to modify some things. The two injector water valves are very loose, as is the handbrake. And the other problem is that the injector water valves don't work at all, they won't even move. When I lay the tender on its side, you can see underneath, and the two water valves are at the right-hand side of the picture. There's a fancy fitting in the middle that's at the lowest point of the water tank to collect the water and pass it to the water valves, which in turn let it through to the injectors on the engine. The water valve stanchions and the handbrake stanchion are not fastened to the tender. These bolts are just dummies that go through the holes. They're actually clamped underneath using nuts, as you can see. The large brass nuts hold them in position. Well, just about. I'm going to strip out all the old water piping and these two injector water valves that really are stuck. I'm going to replace the water valves and the piping in due course. This is going to be a very fiddly job. Already it's proving difficult. I'm spraying the parts with WD-40 to free them off. I think there's been some water leakage, and water leakage on an injector feed is not a good idea because water leakage is usually accompanied by letting air into the system, and any air bubbles in the water feed to the injector are likely to make the injector stop working. I've just undone the nut holding the water valve in place and when I remove everything, these water valves were obviously not the original water valves and the hole's been filed very crudely when the replacement valve was fitted. I'll modify this arrangement in due course to suit a pair of new water valves. Unfortunately, these water valves, which are completely seized up, have seized up in a very bad place it's very difficult to get my screwdriver in to remove the small bolt that holds the shaft into the water valve. But with the help of some WD-40, a small screwdriver and a pair of surgical forceps, the bolt is finally removed. With the second water valve ready for removal, I thought it was a good idea to dismantle the handbrake assembly. And as you can see, it's very loose indeed. Before the tender goes back to the steam workshop for painting, I'm going to modify it. Because quite frankly, this is a really terrible way to have anything on a model steam locomotive. I don't like bodge jobs, and this is a prime example of a bodge job. So later on in the series, I'll show what I do to the tender to rectify this very poor arrangement. I can't do with jobs like this. The rest of the locomotive and the tender is quite well made. And I doubt if the builder of the engine bodged the tender to this extent. It was probably just bodged to quickly fit some water valves to get it back on the rails. In this clip I've turned the tender over and I'm now removing the braking system. This is fairly straightforward. I just hold the pin with a pair of surgical forceps and remove the nut and then I can just take the braking system off one step at a time. And finally I remove the pin that holds the brake linkage to the lay shaft. And here's the pin. The general aim of this exercise is to remove the frames of the tender from the tank and the frames are held to the tank using these bolts and that's why I had to remove the braking system because I just couldn't get in there with the brakes in the way. This part of the job is going to prove difficult. There is no possible way I can get a socket on these bolts so while I'm thinking about it I'm just going to remove the copper piping. Look at this. I really don't understand why people do jobs like this. It's much easier just to use a new piece of pipe. A squirt of WD-40 makes it much easier to remove the nut. After phoning the Samaritans, I bit the bullet and started removing these bolts using a spanner like this. As I was doing this job, my mind wandered to images of high public buildings suitable for jumping off 
and I also wondered if it was possible to enrol in a noose-making class. This was a horrible job. It took ages. My brain does not like doing jobs like this. And the sad thing, of course, is there are quite a lot of these. They're very nice bolts, but I think when I put it back together, I'm going to use bolts that either have an Allen cap head or at least a slot. After quite a long time, I finally managed to make it so I could lift the frame off the tank. And the other thing was, they weren't all bolts. This one is a stud and a nut, so I'm replacing the nut on the stud so that it doesn't get damaged. The paintwork on the frames is considerably worse than the paintwork on the tender body. So the next job is to remove the wheels and axle boxes, and then I'll be able to thoroughly clean the paint off the wheels and the axle boxes, not forgetting removing the paint from the frames as well. I think I may just take these frames to the steam workshop and use their shop blasting cabinet, it will save time. Not one of the best jobs on a miniature steam locomotive, but it has to be done. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.